Stay tuned at the end, I'm gonna tell you what shad rigs to use. Especially if you're used to a normal shad rig like this, I got something that's gonna put it to shame, so stay tuned for that. Hey everybody, we're out here at the Tar River in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. This is supposed to be one of the best shad places in North Carolina, maybe even on the East Coast. Not 100% sure about that, but I'm gonna call it that. But, uh, but this is supposed to be one of the best places to go. We're gonna see if we can't get out here on some shad. I haven't ever specifically targeted shad species without a cast net before, so this is something totally new to me. But I do have some things figured out. So you cast out a little bit upstream and then you let it rainbow out to the side. Let your line rainbow out. And then when it does on the swing around, when you're reeling it in, that's when you'll get the hit. So I'm gonna show y'all how to get it done. It's been really fun learning to do this and let's get into it. In Jesus name we pray, amen. So the technique is to cast out a little bit upstream that way, let it drift back down a tad, and then just start reeling it in. Here I'm just demonstrating the technique, but you can see where the water is a little bit higher than the way it has been throughout the rest of these videos. But with the water like this, I give it about two full seconds to sink. This first and second clip here is actually the third or fourth time I've visited this location. I found out early on from a fellow YouTuber that you need light tackle to be able to land these fish and get the right stretch from the mono and casting distance needed to perform the right technique. My first couple of visits I showed up with 20 pound braid and the wrong size spoons. I wasn't able to get nearly far out enough. I've since come back with 10 pound mono, smaller spoons, and chartreuse grubs with a quarter ounce jig head. Until then, did I really start slaying these bad boys. Pulling some oh, he got off. Got off. I could probably walk out there and grab him. Oh, nope. Now, on this day in particular, the water was low enough to where I didn't really have to cast upstream that far. But fish were breaking all around, and I decided to take a chance and cast in an area where I saw activity. Usually, when you cast in an area where you saw a fish break, chances are that specific shad has probably already moved on and 20 feet away from where you just saw him break the water. Because remember, these fish are like aerodynamic darts in the water that swam all the way from the Atlantic Ocean. And let me tell you, man, they are fast. This time I lucked out though. I don't know if it was the same shad that was breaking or one coming in right behind him, but it slammed it and gave me a fun little fight. Something that I've noticed that pertains to these Atlantic and Hickory shad is that lots of things come in twos. If you catch a fish or get a bite, the man right beside you is probably gonna experience one of those things as well. I would say they're swimming groups rather than schools of fish. Getting on my first one this morning. Oh, we jumped down there. Send them on back. And let me boy. tell you, these things are some fighters Boom. in the water, Get on but they here. are not fighters for their lives. Live. They will Live. die if you handle them too much. Live. Let's help him out. There he goes. He's off to a new life. Goodbye, Leroy. We will miss you forever. This is a steel shot that I took of my brother. I think he only came out this day so he could trash my YouTube channel the whole time. This is another episode of the Dixon Line. Follow me for more tips. <laughs> Which brings me to my next topic, drag settings. Oh, he broke my line. Make sure that your drag is fairly loose so that you can get these fish fought in properly. Their entire bodies are pretty much made of soft tissue, so it's pretty easy to rip anything out of their mouth, especially when they're getting caught up in the current and things like that. And they are absolutely some runners. Or in some cases, um, you know, don't ego reel. If you try to ego reel your fish in, you're definitely going to break your rig off or lose your fish every single time. So be mindful of that. All right. The two red lines indicate where the two natural currents are in the river. As you can see, the shad will come out of the natural flow of water to feed on bait fish, feed on crustaceans, or chase your rig into these areas, or possibly just to catch a rest. Shad usually don't eat when spawning, so they'll usually strike when irritated. 
The resting portion of their journey upstream is done in shallower waters, especially on overcast days, like this fish here, for example. They hit just in between the two red lines. On sunny days, they hit right where the red lines were typically. Shad are low light feeders, so on sunny days, hitting the deeper water first could be a great strategy for saving time when applying other techniques. The best time to get your line into the water for targeting these species is sunrise when you're sleepy or sunsetting with the mosquitoes. I'd also like to point out the amount of drag that I let this fish have. Leroy's the reckless driver, and I'm just riding shotgun for the glory. Networking with other fishermen in the area is a great opportunity to learn technique, what colors to use that day, see what's working, that sort of thing. Sometimes you learn more from watching older guys than you can from watching a video. Your casting and retrieval technique may differ from mine depending on your area and what conditions are. So take some of what I say with a grain of salt. If you can't quite figure it out, ask an old guy that's willing to help. Someday, we'll be the old guys and we'll have to have the answers for our younger generation. Otherwise, we let our traditions die. This fella here in the green coat on the other side handmade all of his shad darts and he outfished me and the other guy by a mile that day. There are way too many people nowadays that just want to hold big fish on the internet while lacking genuine respect for the craft and stand in disregard for this blessing that God gave us. Alright, so we're on a nice another shad right there, baby. I'm going to throw that Leroy in the bucket. This is the older gentleman that I mentioned earlier with the homemade shad darts and green jacket. He's got probably the prettiest fish of this particular day as well. He's the one that showed me the benefits of converting the standard shad killer rig that we all know and love into a three-way swivel that heightens loss prevention and a more natural presentation of the standard chartreuse grub. That's all right right there. Yes, sir. This was a good learning experience for me. Of course, I've had fish jump up and dance out of the water for me, but this is where I learned that shatter habitual head shakers. Make sure to give them some slack if you think they're gonna shake you loose. These are the type of shad that I usually target with a cast net. These are known as thread fin shad. These, however, are definite school swimmers. If you don't have a cast net, you can usually target these by pulling a treble hook through a school of them. Speaking of foul hooking shad, I foul hooked a gizzard shad here across his back, not trying to of course. I would consider gizzard shad to be the dumbest of all the shad species and arguably the laziest. Shad in general are considered to be trash fish to eat, but I would put them in the same category just above thread fin out of the species in terms of fun fights. Shad make great catfishing bait, as well as rockfish, striper, or striped bass, depending on your preference of name. They're bony, but they stay on the hook well when using them as cut bait, even after freezing when fish tends to mush up after thawing. I wouldn't use thread fin shad for bait unless it was fresh or salted. Their bodies are just way too salty. Going back. If you are in a place where it's feasible to pull the fish onto the bank like I am here for example, then do so. If you are in a boat, pull the fish into the boat with your hand or net. If the hook is not hooked into a hard spot in the mouth, then you risk losing your fish to a fleshy hook <laughs> Did you catch a bass? I took this fish home here so that I could make a salted bait video showing how to take it and store it so that you can keep it for longer periods of time for cat fishing and rock fishing as well. I'll put a link up in the top. Now, what everybody is used to is this shag rig right here. You got your shad dart or you got your grub here and back here you got your shad spoon. Maybe a perfection knot here or a, uh, or a barrel swivel and it comes through the water in a straight line just like this here so there's an alternative to that and that is using a three-way swivel just like this one here i don't know how well you can see that but up here at the top that's where you put your main line connected to it now it gets you a pretty long leader the uh the one i've got here is maybe 14 15 inches something like that and then down here 
This one's about a little bit over two foot for your shad spoon. So when it's coming through the water, this piece right here hangs down a little bit lower and then your spoon is back here behind it. So you actually cover more depths of water. Now for that, for this rig right here, I'll post the link up here at the top if you want to make that. And then for this rig, I will also put a link at the top for you to be able to make this one as well. This one is my preferred method. And uh, you would think that this thing gets tangled up all the time, but it actually doesn't. It's the same amount of headache getting tangled up as this one over here. So y'all have a good one. I hope y'all enjoyed my video. Like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know down in the bottom if you can identify any of those shad that I caught. I think that'd be something fun to do. And uh, and I'll, I'll respond in the comments. So y'all have a good one. Go catch you some shad.